Hey and welcome back to another video and in our last video we actually created our people view or our people detail view that you can actually see here so in this video we're actually going to look at how we can actually use our static JSON mapper to load some fake data into our detailed people view as well as navigate to the screen from our people view so the reason why we're not using the API just yet is because we just want somebody to quick we see and use to help us finish off our UI and quickly prototype it. So once we have this in place, we'll actually make our life a lot easier so we can just slot in our service code later. So right now, it's just loading a bunch of dummy strings to simulate a profile. So you can see here that it's just got some like placeholders and whatnot. But what we wanna do is actually use some of the dummy data from our actual, you know, JSON mapper file that we built before. So now what we're going to do is use the on appear modifier on our Z stack so that when this view appears, we actually load our fake dummy data. So let's do that now. So now that we actually added in the logic for actually loading our dummy data, we need to give it some kind of local source of truth. Now the source of truth like I said in the previous video is just a data storage that this view will read from. So we can do this by adding a state variable within this view. And if you want to learn more about this, you can check out my video, Swift UI State and Data Flow playlist which is also a mini course on this topic so let's actually add in a state property at the top of our file now that we've added in the state property and made it private we actually now want to set this within our on appear after we decode the file so we're just going to say here rather than setting the local variable well local concept i should say we're just going to set this to be our user info like so okay cool now it's worth noting as well if you actually look at the type for our user info we actually made this optional and the reason why we made this optional is because when you actually go to the screen for the first time there isn't any user information so what we're going to do when we're actually linking this up to our uis is that if there isn't any information for a certain property then we're just going to show a dash rather than this placeholder so what we want to do is actually start to do that now so let's go into our views here where we actually set up our first last name and email and what we want to do is here rather than setting our user id to a hard zero what we're just going to do is we're just going to say user info dot data dot id is equal to the integer now if this integer doesn't exist then we're just going to set it to zero as a default now for our first name placeholder here we're just going to do a similar thing where we say user info dot data dot first name and if it can't get a first name then we'll just give it a dash and then we'll do a similar thing for our last name and then finally we'll do a similar thing for our email as well okay cool sweet so now, if we actually just run this and just see what happens, you'll now see that it actually fetches the data from our local JSON file and actually fills out the data so you can actually see that. So this is all looking pretty good. So another thing to note as well is that we actually have the support URL on the screen here. So in our response for our user detail, we actually have a property here called support and within support, we're able to get a URL and some text. So now let's actually use that to actually lay out this view. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to say that if we're able to actually get a link and the text from our user detail response, then we're going to add this view onto the screen here. So we're going to wrap it within some optional chaining. So let's actually just go into our link and then in here, we're now going to start to do that. So we're just going to say within here, so we're going to say if let, so I'm going to type this out and then we'll break it down. So what we're saying here is we're going to get the absolute string from the URL and then we're going to try and convert it to an actual URL and then we're going to get the support text from the support user information. So let's actually just copy this here and then just put this within our if let like so. And then we're just going to start to use the properties from our optional unwrapping. So rather than this being the, you know, string hard coded like this, we're going to remove this and replace it with support URL. And then we're going to replace this text here with support text. And then this text is the absolute string of the URL so the user can just see that. So we're just going to use the absolute string here. So support absolute string like so. 
So we've got an error here, and the reason why we have an error is because it doesn't know what's well, actually possible that if one of these are actually nil, we actually don't return a view at all, and this expects some kind of view. Now in order to fix that, all we need to do is similar to what we did with our first name, last name, and email, we just need to mark this with the at view builder property wrapper like so. And then now our error goes away. So if any of these is nil, then it'll just return an empty view. So now if we actually just run this, you should see that our text is actually being updated from our JSON file. But one thing to note, if you can actually notice, is that our text is actually being aligned to the center. So in order to actually fix this, what we want to do is actually apply a style onto this text view where we say that we want the multi-line text to be aligned to the left-hand side. So on this text here, we're just going to say here, multi-line text alignment dot leading like so and now our text is aligned to the left hand side which is great so if you actually look at our design as well you'll notice as well that we also have a bit of an avatar image that you can actually see on the screen for a user so what we're going to do is actually add in some logic to safely unwrap the url and actually add this into the screen now so let's go into our view and we actually want this to live outside of this group. So we don't want it to be part of this group because we don't want to apply these styles onto that avatar image. So before the group, we're just going to do a bit of typing. So what we're saying here is we want to get the user's data avatar string, and then we want to basically construct and build a URL out of this string here. So now we want to actually add in an ASIC image within this if let to actually match our design. So let's do that now. So now we have an async image where we just simply pass in the avatar URL and we apply some styles onto the image where we basically set the height of it to be 250 and we clip it so it doesn't actually go outside of the bounds. And we also set a progress view as you can see here to show that something is loading and we simply just clip this with a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 16 and a style of continuous. So if we actually just run this in the Swift UI preview, you'll notice that this looks exactly like our mock-up designs and works as expected. But one thing that we need to do as well, just to keep this clean, is we don't want this code to be directly within this VStack. So let's actually look at extracting this out into its own computer property so it's clearer in terms of how, um, in terms of its purpose. So let's create a similar one to our link. And we'll just call this avatar. And then we'll simply just cut this code in here and then paste it within here. And then now we'll just type here avatar like so. So now this matches our design and you can see here by looking at the body, it's a lot clearer in terms of the purpose of what's actually going on and on this screen. So this is looking pretty good. So if I actually just run this on a preview, one thing you'll realize that's missing is that we actually don't have our title here that says details. So let's actually add this in. So we don't actually want to add in a navigation view within this detail view because we're actually going to push to this view from our people view. And our people view already is within a navigation view. So we don't actually need to stack another one inside of here. So instead, what we're going to do is just add in the navigation title property onto our Z stack. And we're just going to type out details. And you'll notice that you're not able to actually see this title on the screen. And the reason why is because like I said a second ago, this isn't within a navigation view. So in order to preview this, all we need to do is just simply add our Swift UI preview within a navigation view so we can see what it looks like. So let's just embed this within a navigation view like so. Cool. And now this looks more like our mock-up design. So this is looking pretty good. So the next thing that we want to do is we actually want to go to this screen. Because if you actually look at our mock-ups, you'll see that you're actually able to push to this. Now, what we want to do is actually wrap our item in a navigation link. And I'm going to say this with a bit of warning that starting with iOS 16, there's actually a new way to handle navigation in SwiftUI. Now, the version that I'll be showing you is if you need to support iOS 15 or below. And I actually covered this in my video, push and dismiss screens with navigation link in SwiftUI. Now in the videos towards the end of this course, we actually will be adding in code to see how to handle navigation specifically for iOS 16. So 
Let's go into our people view. And what we want to do is actually use a navigation link that accepts a label and a destination. So if we go into our people view, we want our person item view to live within a navigation link label. So within our for each, we're just going to say navigation link. And then we want the option where it's destination and label like so. And we want our destination to be our person detail view. So our detail view like so. And then we want this label to be our person item view like so. Okay, cool. So now let's actually just test this out and see if it works. So if I actually tap on this person, you'll see that it takes them to their information and we can also see the details as well and go back. If I click on this person, you'll see that it's actually not loading Jane we Janet Weaver and that's because in our detail view we've said that we want to use the first person in our JSON file which is this brother here so when we actually link this up to the API it will actually show Janet Weaver in the next videos now in our detail view we actually have this link and in the Swift UI preview this isn't going to work so in order to actually see this working what you need to do is actually run this on the simulator and you just run this now on the simulator if we just tap into someone and then tap on this link, you'll now see that it takes us to Safari and actually loads up that URL for us automatically. And we can go back to our iOS take home project to go back to the same screen. So that's it in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.